Hello and welcome to a very special broadcast. My name is Ankit Vingurlekar and it's only been a few hours that Chandrayaan 2 mission has launched successfully and it's up there in the space making its way to the moon. We have a special program here on tech2.com to celebrate the success of Chandrayaan 2 and of course to talk about the road ahead because let me remind you this is just the beginning and of course the most crucial step of the Chandrayaan 2 mission. I'm joined by space experts and people who have made a study of space their life's mission. Joining me here in the studio is Siddharth and Srinivas. Siddharth has just returned from working at NASA Ames and is working on astrobiology. So all those cool new aliens and life forms we're going to find on any other planet or any other uh, space object, he's going to be looking out for those. Uh, and Srinivas, of course, is a senior journalist when it comes to all things space. He has authored a couple of books, including two on Mangalyaan, India's Mars mission. Let's start off with you, Srinivas. Now, Chandrayaan 2 has been dubbed as India's, ISRO's most ambitious and most complex space mission ever. Now, in the world of superlatives, everything goes and everything passes. But break it down for us and help us understand why is it so complex? It's complex uh, because... I think because this is the first uh, mission which is going to land on the moon. Not only that, you see Chandrayaan 1 landed. Let us not get that clear. That was a hard landing. Mm -hmm. But this one, they are going to pull off a soft landing and it is very, very complicated. What's and the it, difference in a hard landing? Hard landing, I just drop it. Okay. I stand corrected. Soft landing, you know, those uh, systems have to work as he explained earlier. And it has to come down very care, slowly so that everything goes off well. The last few minutes is very, very complicated. Mm -hmm. And that is what, in my opinion, makes this mission extremely complex and nail biting. And Sivan said, 15 minutes of terror. 15 minutes of terror when the soft landing happens. I think now is also a good time to remind our viewers that India has never soft landed never. on any other spatial object anywhere else. Of course, there may have been simulations that have happened. But when you are literally 4 lakh odd kilometers yeah. away from home and for all systems to work in tandem and the landing sequence to happen just right, it is it's very, very nail biting. We'll be sitting on the edge of our chairs. And it's a new awakening in India that day, September right. 7th. Right. Uncorking so, the champagne bottle. <laughs> we will be. We will be uncorking a champagne bottle here because it will be the night of 6th of September and you will have these guests and other space experts as well in the studio for us. Siddharth, so uh, like Srinivas alluded, that this is complex because Chandrayaan 2 needs to do a soft landing. I hate to be a party pooper, but talk to us about the number of things that could go wrong potentially and why that soft landing is so critical because Israel had their own Bereshit uh, you know, lunar program and uh, it crash landed on the surface of the moon. And this happened literally very recently. April 12th. In April, yes. April of 2019. Yes. yes. So starting right from even before entering lunar orbit, uh, there is a very critical phase when the spacecraft will be leaving Earth orbit and getting inserted into a transfer trajectory towards the moon. So that fire is a critical fire to ensure that it is moving in the right direction. That's the first point where there might be a misfire from a thruster and we might not be able to enter orbit. But it's not as critical as the lunar orbit insertion. So once the spacecraft is moving towards the moon, um, it has to slowly decelerate and let the lunar gravity pull it in, into its orbit. And that is a critical phase. Then it gets into lunar circular orbit and then you have the stage where the detachment happens from the orbiter. Mm -hmm. And then like Srinivas mentioned, we have the soft controlled descent, mm -hmm. which is completely automated. There's no intervention. There's a delay in communication close to about three seconds, which in the scheme of things is a lot. So mm -hmm. we cannot manually do it from Earth. It has to be done autonomously. And that might lead to a situation where we do not have the engines firing at the right point of time, or they shut off earlier than expected, like it happened in Israel, and then uh, it, it just crashes, crashes on the, onto the surface. But we have good, strong reason to believe that we, we'll, we'll be able to overcome these problems and, and proceed. Because the launch of uh, GSLV Mark III, of course, it, it induces a lot of confidence. Yes, and uh, most of these systems, in space especially, they go through a rigorous amount of tests. Mm -hmm. The onboard computers, the engines, and everything. So there's a lot of redundancy and a lot of... Uh, preparation that goes into these systems. I'm sure they've been over the simulation hundreds yes. of times, several times, to, several to, times. to see what yeah. could potentially go wrong and you know debug those systems. Uh, this is also one of the first times, Siddharth, that there's been a lot of private participation. 
uh, let's not forget ISRO is a public organization. Yeah. It's a government funded body. Yes. Okay. And uh, how does this public private partnership or this sort of association impact future missions and impact academics? Yes. It is becoming a hotly coveted viable career option. Yes. You know, you studied aerospace engineering, which yes. still sounds so exotic, yeah. but maybe that completely changes now on. Correct. Like, I still remember uh, when Chandrayaan 1 uh, successfully launched, I was in my second or third year of aerospace engineering. And uh, it definitely ignites mine. So talking about the public-private partnership. So Chandrayaan has a lot of components. And if India gets this right, it opens up opportunities at each of those stages, at the launch vehicle stage, um, at the spacecraft development stage, mm -hmm. the landing and the operations on the lunar surface, there are all a lot of components where private companies can in fact work with ISRO in mm -hmm. developing these subsystems for future missions. Okay. So there's scope for technology uh, partnerships between the government and uh, private players. In terms of the research, once we have a functional lander with an operational rover on the surface, we have science that is going to be streamed back to us. And there's the opportunity for academic research, where you have different research organizations and universities, such as mine, um, Amity. We have a lot of young scientists, mm. postdocs, who can then work on the data that is coming back. And that just increases the amount of attention that is given to space data and reinvigors the academic science community in India for space research. This is such a milestone that nearly every component of the Chandrayaan-2 composite is indigenously built. Yeah. Right from the GSLV Mark III rocket that's taking the mission into space to the orbiter, to the lander, and to the Pragyan rover. All of this is indigenously made and it's a remarkable achievement by By just ISRO. one NASA instrument on that. Just yeah. laser reflector laser uh, reflector array. Yes. Okay. okay. So Don't it's a passive it's a passive instrument okay. that uh, NASA has placed on uh, the lander, which what basically it'll be doing is it'll improve our understanding of the earth moon distances basically oh, yeah. so you can it's basically a mirror where you can shoot a mirror from earth and it bounces back from wow. there and gives us very precise measurements about the earth moon uh, dynamics the, the, the dynamics the close to 380000 or yes, kilometer kilometers. distance and it also helps us prove that we have landed on the moon yeah. because, of course, it, because it, it can shoot a laser at it and it's going to point back the laser yeah. at you proof. so right. to, to, to prove because yeah. hey even in 2019 as we celebrate 50 years of the apollo 11 mission we we'll still have people saying that well did we really go there they or just went to like Nevada desert or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The fake, in, uh, the fake moon shot. <laughs> this is to prove them Israel wrong. Israel had that. Uh, I mean, by, by the way, Pragyan, the rover, is also one of the first things it will do because obviously, yeah. come on, millennial guys, it's going to take a selfie of itself yeah. from the surface of the moon. Yeah and send it back, transmit it back to planet Earth. We're going to be uh, waiting for that selfie on the 6th of September. Srinivas, we spoke about NASA, we spoke about government involvement because, you know, these are heavy, heavy investment areas. In the United States, over the last couple of years, we've seen how the lack of political will or different priorities can derail prestigious scientific and space projects. Do you think in India there is a risk of facing a similar fate? I don't think so. My to the best of my knowledge, in India, we don't have such a situation. Because when it comes to space, I have noticed there's been, a, everyone unites. Mm -hmm. It brings the nation together. I mean, I may be wrong, I'm not, I'm not totally knowledgeable with the political sense and all, but I, nobody has said no, uh, been very critical at the express. There may be a few people who, who might say, Slums of Mumbai, but that it's but like isolated. Isolated, isolated, very isolated. We don't India. I have not come across a case. Okay. Even today, in uh, viewing gallery, a lot of opposition party people all joined right. and clapped. I think. I think this is one thing which is bipartisan, and you know, it yeah. unites everybody because yeah. the wonder of space exploration. It. I think all humans become one. One. That is in it. That, in in that. India, we have not faced that. I mean, to the best of my. Interesting, interesting. Okay, let's talk costs and uh, how does the Chandrayaan 2 mission compare in terms of what did it cost to get it up there in space and how does it compare to other space missions? So, the spacecraft by itself, uh, as I understand, is about 600 odd crores mm -hmm. and including the cost of the launch, it comes out to be about a 970 crore Indian rupee value. Okay. Um, that 
Uh, is that Popular. high? Is that low? I would say uh, it's about half the value of the Avengers Endgame movie. <laughs> so it, it's it's a it's a popular uh, sentiment in India that we tend to compare our missions with uh, grandeur uh, sci-fi movies. Um, so, but it, what it does is it does two things. One is it uh, it shows us how efficient we really are with mm. our resources and how we are able to achieve such uh, such things. And not just for a mission, but uh, for an entire program that you know, we are investing money in the right way. We're doing and we're getting the most out of it. Mm. So that's what it does. Siddharth, what capabilities have we achieved? Actually, I want to hear this from Siddharth and Srinivas both because there is a hardware capability and you know, all pun intended, there's a software capability. By software, I mean the people power. The, the countless, nameless, hundreds of scientists, coders, developers, technical crew, uh, that have worked on this space mission and so many others at ISRO. So, uh, Siddharth, let's hear from you the hardware capabilities from Chandrayaan to mission that can be put to good use for future space missions and space exploration by ISRO. Definitely. So, landing a um, rover uh, successfully um, as part of the lander on, onto the surface is tremendous technology capability that India will have. And that will enable us to plan out more ambitious surface missions to the moon, as well as to Mars. Uh, Mars is our next destination. Mm -hmm. um, it is the planet which will help us understand the origins of uh, planets in the solar system. It can also help us answer the question whether life is there on other planets or was there in the past. So, so uh, Mangalyaan 2, uh, I mean, the Prime Minister shared last year on Independence Day that Mangalyaan 2, they are looking at about a 2024 they are, kind of a timeline. But Mangalyaan 2 uh, is going to be an orbiter mission. Okay. Um, but Subsequent to that, there when ISRO will be planning missions. landing missions, okay. it will add confidence. And the thing with ISRO is it's a small unit. It's mm -hmm. the same uh, group of people who will be working on these missions. Okay. And it will be an iteration of the Chandrayaan, Chandrayaan. 2. Okay. So, so that really helps ISRO expand its horizons and plan more sustainable missions to the surface of Moon as well as to Mars. Okay. Srinivas, what about the software power, the soft power, the skill set of ISRO scientists? What does a launch like this do to them? Enhance their confidence. For, uh, to probably, as he said, launch more ambitious missions, interplanetary missions to Mars, asteroids. Venus. Venus, Venus is already, they are planning it. Maybe beyond like the NASA, Saturn, long term. Sure. This will enhance their confidence. And the big one really, all of these, India has never sent a human into space. Mm -hmm. All of this ties into 2023, 2024 for India's first ever manned mission to space called Gaganyaan. 21, yes. 2021? The timeline's December been reversed? 21. December 2021. It's palpable. You can feel it. It's literally two, two years from now. Yeah. Um, all of this ties into that really, doesn't it? I mean, that's the big ticket one here to send Indian astronauts into space. Yes, that's it. Yeah. And ultimately to the moon. And ultimately to the moon. The main okay. thing here is, this mission will excite the younger generation. Mm. You see, if you see the viewing gallery tonight, the la this morning before coming here, I was watching it, all youngsters, school kids, college mm. kids, I want to go to space, I want to go to space, you know, excite them and take to STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Lovely. So that is the main Take away, yeah. I think, of Chandra and yeah, physics, tough. maths, and uh, absolutely, it's ignited so many minds. That's fantastic. Well, uh, thank you so much, Rinvas and uh, Siddharth for thank joining you. us for the live presentation and for this chat. And uh, remember, this is just the beginning of the Chandrayaan two mission. Yes, picture abhi bahod baaki hai mere dosto. Uh, because it's just taken off today and it's going to be into orbit, Earth's orbit and then lunar orbit and then the landing sequence. We are going to take you through all of this in case you haven't already. Go to tech2.com, click on our beautifully designed Chandrayaan 2 hub. All things Chandrayaan you're going to find over there. And put a calendar entry right away. On the 6th of September, unless there's a date change from ISRO that is communicated, our systems are going to be all go on the 6th of September at about 2 in the night. We're going to be doing a live presentation to track the landing of Chandrayaan 2 on the surface around the South Pole, the, the dark side or the far side of the moon with this panel again. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day.